Right, so I have done a light pencil sketch just to mark the mountains behind and just a simple uh, light pencil line to denote where the waves are. And I have also put in the figure, the surfer, another figure here and just a dot to denote the third figure further away from us. So what I'll do is I'll wet the paper thoroughly using a brush because it's it's going to be wet on wet. Uh, most of the painting is going to be wet on wet. So yeah, I'll just make sure that the paper is really wet. All right, and I have here uh, the color Royal Blue from Senalia. It's a beautiful color. Uh, you can use uh, cobalt or any other blue as well uh, to paint this. So I kind of like this color. It just, it's pretty similar to, what is there in the reference photo? So I'll take a bit of uh, the Royal Blue. Maybe add a bit of cobalt in there. And start over here. Bit more paint needed. Yep. So since I have already wet the paper, it's just spreading in all directions. Which is kind of nice for seascapes. So getting a nice soft edge over here where the waves are. So yep. That looks good. And I'll add a bit of burnt sienna into the same mix. It kind of kind of uh, comes up like a nice silver color. A bit of burnt sienna in there. Uh, a bit too much. Needs a little bit of blue in there, yep. Try to leave a bit of white for the surfboard, but uh, I'm not really bothered. Needs a bit more blue in there. It got a bit too. Looks a bit too grayish for my liking. So I'll add a bit more blue there. It's still wet, so should mix. Once it's still wet, I'll just uh, add a few details to denote a bit of a few waves. Not everywhere, just in a few places. Yep, that should be enough. So, whilst this uh, dries, I'll move to the top of the painting, which is kind of the backdrop for our uh, sea. So I'll mix a bit of uh, yellow ochre and maybe a bit of rose or alizarine, whatever you prefer. And just put in that warm sand there. And it kind of uh, merges with the rest of the sea towards the uh, right and I'll take that up. Mm, I'll 
let that dry. Next I'll mix a bit of a warm green, a bit of viridian and a bit of a burnt sienna. And start putting in this uh, hills at the backdrop. So there are a few uh, buildings left here, so I'll try to leave a, bit, a few whites there. buildings here as well. And gradually it becomes lighter towards the right of the painting. So I'll be adding a bit more pigment to this and will be making it a bit more darker. So whilst it's drying a little bit, I'll just move, take this darkness down and uh, start putting in the dark areas in the sea. So I'll use the same uh, uh, royal blue and maybe a bit of a burnt sienna. And it bit of cobalt blue as well. And a bit more dark so it's still a bit moist the paper so I'm getting kind of a smooth brush stroke when I paint this so I don't dry it at all so it's uh, still got a lot of moisture in there So what I'll do is I'll take a bit of cobalt blue and just drop it there into the wet wash. We'll just cool down that particular area and just uh, make it uh, look better with the rest of the painting. Yeah. I kind of lost all the uh, buildings that I was trying to leave white spaces for. That's all right. I'll just uh, I'll just put a white marks with gouache later on. It doesn't really matter. So that's the thing with watercolors. You try to leave space, but sometimes it doesn't work as well. We have to keep.
keep going rather than really worried about because as you can see I cannot let this dry if this is completely dry I cannot get this effect so I can't waste time thinking about these small uh, buildings and stuff that I lost in the wash I just need to keep going that's all So as you can see, that warm green that we put in earlier and the cobalt blue have kind of mixed on the paper and created a nice effect. So if I had mixed all these colors together, it would have been kind of a muddy, uh, ugly looking wash. But now it's like very vibrant and really nice. So this is the part of the painting where the mountain and the sea kind of merge with each other. It's very important to uh, connect this with a soft edge so that the sea and the mountains don't look like two shapes put together. They need to read as the same. So I kind of like the distant hills. So what I'll do next is I'll just try to lift a bit of pigment with my finger, spit my nails uh, to try and get the buildings that I lost earlier. That's it. That should be enough. So what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to put in the uh, this kind of a shadow shape within the wave here. So I'm going to put that in next. I'll mix a bit of uh, the same uh, royal blue. It's a bit too dark. So the shape becomes gradually smaller and disappears. So that's very important to uh, keep in mind that shapes become smaller towards the horizon so that's sometimes when we are preoccupied with the colors and the shapes that we are painting we tend to forget all those uh, but it's very important Again, the brush strokes are much bigger here and they become gradually smaller towards the horizon. Smaller and lighter. All right, so next I'm going to put in the rocks, the seabed over here. And I'll finally put in the surfer. I want the surfer to kind of merge with the rocks over here maybe a shadow maybe his reflections on the water or shadow to connect nicely with the rest of the painting so we'll see how it goes so I'll do the rocks first and then see what we can do to connect the surfer with it, with the rocks okay I'm mixing a bit of uh, ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt amber and try to Try to get that uh, shape going. Is it like a... it needs to be a bit more warmer than that. Just to add a bit of uh, burn sienna. And I'll take a, uh, a soft brush and it's 
uh, this part of the painting is where the rocks kind of merge with the water. So you can see it's a soft edge. Uh, not a soft edge actually, it's a dry brush stroke. So you see the blue within the brown. So that kind of connects the rocks with the blue. So either you can have a soft edge or a dry brush stroke to achieve this. And a few sharp marks. a bit of ultramarine straight off the palette that is useful for painting rocks and other dark areas yep so that looks good and I just need to merge this uh, rocks with the rest of the waves so a few light dry brush strokes will do that so that the rocks gradually connect with the water so I've got two nice connections between the rocks and the water which is very very important I'm just too lazy to reach out for the water I'm just using whatever water is there in the palette So that looks good. Uh, I I didn't want the rocks to stand out on their own. I wanted them to read well with the water, connected with the water. I think it looks good. Right, so next step is to put in the sulfur and, and a few finishing touches to call it a day. So I'll start with the, I'll take a bit of uh, burnt sienna and put in his uh, head first and then his arm, still a lot of moisture in the paper and it's uh, kind of bleeding, nah, that's all right. Maybe I could have waited for a few more minutes, but that's all right. Put in his wet suit next. And the other surfer needs to be a little bit lighter. And the third one even more lighter. details in the surfboard as well. Yep, so that's done. So the next step is to connect him with the rest of the painting. So I'll take a bit of uh, royal blue. He's got a nice, uh, what do you call, reflection on the water. So I'll put that in first. Need need a uh, bit of dry brush strokes to achieve that yep better nice there you go so he's connected with the rest of the painting uh, It's uh, kind of a tricky subject that we handled today. Uh, as 
subject without much tonal contrast in it. So we tried our best to create contrast using shapes within the sea and also some contrast using colors in the mountain as well. I kind of like it. It's a it looks vibrant. And just give it a go and see how it turns out. It's kind of a morning glow in the water. So what I'll do next is I'll just uh, dry this completely and just glaze a bit of a I would call yellow ochre on top of the water. So I'll mix a bit of a, uh, not mix, just use a bit of a yellow ochre of the tube. The paper is completely dry. I don't want it mixing with the blue because it will be disastrous for me. So what I'll do is I'll just take a bit of yellow ochre, maybe even a bit more water in there, just to get that morning glow in the water. Not everywhere, just. All right, so that looks good. It's given that uh, nice contrast with blue. All right, so before I finish off, I'll use a bit of white gouache and try and uh, add a few sparkles here and there. As a last tip, I'll add a bit of uh, darkness over here and just bring that a bit forward. A bit more dark spots here and there. Hope you enjoyed this demo. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky subject as I mentioned before so just give it a go sometimes it might work sometimes it might not uh, we should never really be worried about the outcome when painting in watercolor it's all about enjoying the process I'll just remove the tape I realized that the surfboard is not that prominent, so I'll just put in a bit of uh, warmth in there. Yep, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. Thank you.